Good Saturday uh, to you, YouTube. My name is Don, amateur call sign KE5ADX. I am the RF field tech, and the purpose of my channel is to take my almost 30 years' experience in the RF world, troubleshooting, antenna lines, antennas, equipment, everything like that, a uh, multitude of tools and equipment, bring it to you in the RF world and see if we can't bring them together and show you how things can improve your signal quality while you're making digital and voice contacts. So stand by. So like I said, today we're going to go through and we're going to hook up your handheld antennas, test them, see how well they work. I have the stock uh, Baofeng or Baofeng, depending on who you talk to, antenna, see what it measures out at. And this antenna, uh, this is a Kenwood antenna. I have no clue where I picked this up, where I got it from, but we're going to test this, see what it what it measures at, and we're even going to hook it up to an ICOM. Uh, well, nope, these won't fit, fit on the ICOM, so we're going to use the Baofeng uh, to hook up to our Nano VNA. A lot of videos on there on how to set these up. I'll tell you, the uh, the screen quality will be better if you hook it up to a computer. I don't have a computer that I can hook it up to to show you how well it works and what it would look like on a bigger screen. So you're going to have to bear with me do, trying to do close-ups with an overhead camera on this. I apologize if the quality is not that well. But, you know, I'm just starting out. It's pretty much a rundown shack that I have. Um, so we're going to use this. Um, I will link uh, in the video, uh, in the description, I'll link uh, to the Smoking Ape, uh, his channel, where he really goes in depth with these. Mine is the Nano VNAH. Uh, and he even has a video where he's with uh, Josh KI6NAZ from the Ham Radio Crash Course. I'll put both of those videos in the description uh, at the end of this. So stay tuned as we as we look at this. So here we go. We're going to be looking at the Nano VNA. Mine is the Nano VNA uh, dash H. It is a smaller unit. Um, you can uh, see there are several videos out there. Smoking Ape has some. Um, he's got one with uh, KI6 NAZ Hoshnasi from uh, jo Josh from Ham Radio Crash, Crash Course. Um, you can see I have a channel 0 and a channel 1. You flip that over, you'll see a TX and an RX. Your antenna will go to your TX, and your radio will go to your RX. And I am going to show you how to set this up to test uh, your antenna and your radio with your throughput so that you can see what your results will be. Um, I'm zoomed in about as far as I can get because I've got an older iPhone. Um, uh, Due to some stuff at work, I'm not going to say where I work. I can't, uh, I can't actually monetize my channel. Um, so everything I have, I'm not sponsored by anybody. Uh, none of this is gifted to me. This is stuff I've, I've purchased myself. So I just want to get that out of the way. So the first thing I'm going to do is power on the Nano VNA. Now I've done, I've done this test before, so it's already set up for what I'm going to be looking for. But I'm going to walk through the setup with you, uh, show you what you need to do. So first thing you're going to do here, oh, let me get back in frame here. You're going to touch your screen. Uh, come on, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Uh, you really can't see it because of the co because of the color, but you're going to see your stimulus. You're going to do your start frequency, 144 megahertz, because we're doing the two meter band. Uh, you're going to do your stop at a 148 so there you've got it set um, now you don't have to use the provided cables uh, to test with if you don't want to I like to because I like getting that separation especially to the radio um, so I'm gonna hook this up and as always, as you'll see with, with Ape's videos, and I'll put his videos uh, in, the, in the description below. Um, I'll link them over. Um, 
he says you always, always, always want to calibrate. This will always calibrate to channel zero. Not sure why, but that's what it does. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my open, which I don't know if you can see in there. Let me grab my little pointer thingy here. You can see there's no center pin. That's showing this to be the open. So you're going to need your adapter on there. And you're going to go there to your adapter to open. Go here. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go calibrate. Calibrate open. So it's already done the open. Change over to the short. The short, you can see the center pin there. The center pin is what's going to short out the cable uh, to show that there's a short on it. Um, go ahead and hit my short. Uh, I hit my short, and then if you can see, I don't know if it's going to show very clearly, but I'm at a 4.1 with a short. Um, so then I'm going to take that off of there, and I'm going to go to a load. And like I said, because we're going to go to a uh, uh, load shows a 1.07, that's not really an accurate but because we are also going to hook the radio up to see what it looks like going through a radio, I'm going to hook up over here to my channel 1, which is my, uh, like I said, that is my receive. Channel 0 is transmit. Channel 1 is receive. Uh, you can see that. I'm going to go down here to where it says through. I know you can't see this. This is better done on a computer. Um, it's bigger screen. But I really don't have a way to do that. So I'm going to hit done, back, and I'm at a one to, practically a one to one on this throughput. Uh, 1.01. One. Uh, I'm going to go here. And, oh wow. Well. Um, so my channel zero is a 1.01, one. and I'm about a 31 to one on my. Uh, uh, my throughput from channel 0 to channel 1. Now this cable may be bad. That's something that this cable could be bad, which is why it's given a bad reading. Um, one thing we could do is change the cable, see what happens here. Go to channel 0, uh, 1.17 with this cable. You should calibrate this cable as well. Eh still seeing the same thing. So I'm going to take this off of here and I'm going to hook up to this antenna. I have no clue so where I got this antenna, when I got this antenna. It's an old antenna. Um, and look, to the antenna I'm at a 1.17. And that is a stock antenna. Like I said, I have no clue as to where I got it. Um, that's actually a really good reading. Um, it's kind of brittle. I probably need to take some silicone to this. One thing you should do is maintenance on your antennas. Always do maintenance on your antennas, on your feed line, everything. I'll be talking about that another time, the feed line. I'll be doing next week at a ham club. I'm going to talk about antenna lines, maintenance on them. Probably need to throw some silicone on here. That'll soften this rubber up so it's not feeling like it's dry rot. And then... I'm going to take the other cable, hook it up here to channel 1, and hook that to my ICOM. Like I said in my, in my intro, this ICOM, it's an older ICOM. It's a 7, seven milliwatt, that's why it's a 7Q, seven, seven um, or Q7. So I'm going to power that on, and as you can see, um, I'm at a 1.14 to that antenna, and when I key up, you can see that little bump way down there. So what I'm going to do is, this could be kind of difficult to see because you're way up there, but I'm going to go and I'm going to drag one of my markers to that hump, which is a 1.16. So you can see that my SWR in blue on my transmit is a 1.16. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and turn on my Baofeng, 
and I am on the national call, calling frequency 146.52. Set that over there. KE5ADX. Kind of blipped over there. Didn't really uh, make any impact on it. Let me see if I can get that in the shot again. KE5ADX. So the Baofeng's not really receiving, even though it's it's transmitting out pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and grab Baofeng. I'm going to key it up. KE5ADX. Yeah, it's not really changing anything on my receive over here. <coughs> Excuse me for that. I, uh, I'll go back and try taking that out. I've got some asthma going on here. So as I said, you don't really need this cable. I like to put it in there just to see, uh, just to put some separation. But you don't really need it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hook directly up to this unit. No, oh, I can't because it's a different... Uh, I don't have an adapter for that because this is a this is a male. Hmm. I can't use this on my bow on my icon because it's a different type of antenna. Um, might be able to use that. Yeah, I can use that on my bow fang because I'll hook my bow fang up so you can see that the antenna how bad this antenna how bad this antenna is. Uh, let me get it over there. This antenna is the stock Baofeng antenna. So this antenna is a better receiver than that one. And they are the same. But because this antenna is a 1.1 1 .1 to 1, and this one, as we will see when I hook up the cable again, because I don't have the adapters for it, Well, um, huh, weird, now I'm at a 1.1, .1. as you can see, I'm at a, like a 1.13, 1.11, .1 huh, that's weird, when I t tested this, this Baofeng antenna earlier, it was a 9, so that tells me this cable, which is the one I had hooked up to it, This cable I had hooked up to it was bad because I had this hooked up to that Baofeng antenna and it tested at a 9. So your cables can go bad. That's one way to even verify your cables. Um, as you can see, I did that here. Um, I'll even do it this way. I'll take this cable off of here and I'll plug it into that Baofeng antenna and we'll see what we read there. So we know this cable's good because I just tested it. It's a 1.1. I'm going to hook up here. Hmm. Interesting. It's still a 1.1. What happens when I hook up to my to my dummy load here? And my dummy load, which should be because it's a 50 ohm dummy load. 50 ohm dummy load is a 1.1. .1. It's a perfect match. So this cable may not be bad. Um, I just might have a weird... Uh... So I need to get a different antenna for this anyway. Um... <coughs> but as you can see, now I'm going to go back to my VFO. Going to... and, and now I'm receiving really well on my Baofeng which I wasn't receiving before with the stock antenna, uh, which is kind of really cool. Uh, let me go ahead and shut that off so I don't get that interference in here. But that's that's using this to test both your... That's testing both your cable. You can test your cables, see if they're good. You can test any cable that way. You can test your cables, make sure they're good. Testing your antennas. This, like I said, is the stock Baofeng. I'm replacing it with that other one. Um, I'll have to silicone that other one, uh, make, get rid of some of that dry rot on it. And that's uh, 
that's kind of handy using the, the nano VNA and like I said the uh, the screen on the computer is going to give you a bigger shot I was trying to see if I can use it on an iPad it didn't work but you know so much so much for that maybe maybe somebody can write a write the code so you can use the nano VNA and the tiny essay which I do have a tiny essay essay I'll be using that in another video to show how to um, do some RF RFI hunting and you could probably even do it on the, the nano VNA but I think the spectrum analyzer is better for RFI hunting um, you can set it up walk around your house see where you've got some RFI so there you have my my video today showing how to set up the nano VNA how to hook up your antennas um, to get your SWR on the antennas on the radio uh, you can see that as I was as I was transmitting I was getting about a 1.12 on my transmit and my receive was about a 1.3 1.4 if I remember correctly on on these antennas so they're both okay uh, they can be better uh, if you can get that closer to 1.1 um, and as I said uh, with this Kenwood antenna, I really need to throw some silicone on there to get rid of this dry rot. Uh, something you should do to all your antennas and your feed lines. Feed line, feed line, feed line. You want to you want to silicone those as well to keep them supple and make sure that they don't dry rot and, and wear out quicker. So if you like this video, smash that thumbs up, hit subscribe, hit the bell notification. Until next time, 73.